When someone hears the word Pakistan, this is what comes to mind. Is Pakistan a wild western flick or a treasure island? Well, it's a bit of both. But first, let's explore the wild side of Pakistan. Is this really a country with more guns than roses? Terrorist incidents are not new to Pakistan. But two military operations have driven back the insurgents to a remote region in the northwest bordering Afghanistan. Terrorist incidents have fallen drastically by 40%. Pakistan's governance is perceived to be weak and inefficient. Tax to GDP is very low and the undocumented economy size is estimated to be half as big as the formal economy. And so, foreigners and companies are a bit reluctant to invest in Pakistan. But they have good reason to be here. Pakistan has some of the most advanced competition laws in the world. Pakistan is perceived to be an expensive place to do business. But is it really? To put it simply, let's look at inflation as per the Economist Big Mac Index. In Pakistan, a Big Mac costs $2.98, while the same Big Mac costs $3.54 in the UAE and $3.96 in Turkey. Inflation in Pakistan is at its lowest point in more than a decade. Pakistan is going through extreme energy shortages, due to which exports are stagnating. However, just recently, Pakistan and China have signed agreements for 14 power projects totaling 8,030 megawatts, including the world's largest solar power project worth $1.5 billion, which has already started functioning. And Pakistan also has enough coal reserves to meet the country's energy requirements for the next 500 years. Now that we've seen the wild side of Pakistan, Let's take a peek inside the treasure island. When you look at the world map, you could say that Pakistan luckily occupies a sweet spot. From the world's deepest seaport all the way to the second highest mountain, Pakistan's landscape is a versatile mix of mountains, deserts, valleys, fertile plains and rivers. Its location is of immense geostrategic importance. Two of the world's big superpower strategic interests lie in Pakistan. For China, Pakistan is an excellent transit route to market in the Middle East and Africa. And this modern-day Silk Route cuts travel distance from China to the Middle East by about 12,000 kilometers. Let's look at the dynamic segments of Pakistan's population. In a way, you can fit France and the whole of Scandinavia in Pakistan. Our labor force is twice the population of France. And the number of people who earn $30,000 a year is more than the entire population of Scandinavia. Almost every Pakistani adult carries a cell phone. And 76% urban households have a TV and 59% have a washing machine suggesting growing urbanized behavior. Out of 30 million internet users, 1 million people are working online out of which there are 20 million active Facebook users and 1.5 million on Twitter. Like the people, the landscape of Pakistan is also unique. Pakistan's diversity provides every kind of industry the opportunity to grow and prosper, from heavy industry, manufacturing, automotive, pharmaceutical, to food processing, you name it. But there is one particular industry that is the apple of our eye, food processing. We are the world's second largest producer of milk and the fourth largest producer of mangoes and oranges. It comes as no surprise that a whopping 50% of urban household spending is on, you guessed it, food. Despite our economy getting bad press, there is good reason to believe in Pakistan. The GDP is growing at 5% on average. Foreign remittances are on the rise. Investor confidence is growing. The security situation is improving. And most of all, because Searle grew 17%, Abbott grew 14%, Colgate grew 20%, Unilever grew 16%, and Nestle grew 17% in the last two decades.